Hello multi-modest Manxman, I'm Ralphie in the Blothy, somewhere in the Irish Sea in Manxland. And thank you to Michael Wood for providing the malt mention for Ralphie Review 912 Extras X for additional commentary, opinion, perspective and all the rest of it relating to whisky. Now I've just reviewed Loch Lomond 18 year old which it's not a great single malt but it's an improved single malt and it's better value for the price you pay for it than it used to be. And something which is a bit of a feature of Loch Lomond Distillery, once you do your Sherlock Holmes, is your investigations, is that this is a distillery that is very industrial in its approach to making whisky. Um, and it makes a huge variety of whiskies, blended and malt, because they have column stills, they have pot stills at the distillery, and they also have what they don't like to be called Loman stills, but people call it Loman stills because, hey, it's Loch Loman Distillery. You know, so why wouldn't you? Because you've got these big sort of fat-necked cylindrical stills that are not, strictly speaking, pot stills. But... Um, that is tolerated the Scotch Whisky Association to the best of my knowledge hasn't sent them a cease and desist letter about using these stills and hey it's traditional to that distillery so why not but I want to focus this particular review on the difference between when casks are stored like that and when they're stored like that right when I see casks stored like that that tells me that the casks are being better warehoused. And I, when I visit warehouses, I, l I really like to see a good dunnage or half dunnage warehouse with an earth floor and it's a little bit damp and musty and it's got some perfectly good ventilation and nice heat reflecting roofs to keep it cool. And you have the casks stored on their sides in rows on strips of plywood, such as the style not plywood, of, of wood, such as the style you would see used for flooring boards and joists and ceilings of houses. That kind of big st strip of wood. Because when you have that situation, it means that during maturation, both that end of the cask and that end of the cask are exposed to the whisky and whereas we tend to think that it's the staves running from end to end that supply the majority of the interaction um, between liquor and, and oak, this is not necessarily the case when a cask is reassembled from a bundle of staves that have arrived flat pack in the cooperage and some of them may be a little bit fresher than others some may be a bit more exhausted than others but the one thing that a cooperage can do for very little expense to the distiller in refurbishing their casks is that it can, can completely replace the wood on the barrel heads and that makes it active wood now, when a, when a barrel is sitting in its side, both ends are immersed with the whisky. However, when a cask, for purely for warehouse convenience, for logistical convenience, and no other reason, I don't care what these distillers tell you, frankly, don't believe them. It's just for practicality and convenience for using a forklift truck for manoeuvring casks in and around a warehouse. That's the only reason you have palletage. So pallets sit on... So imagine that my little book here is a wooden pallet, a standard industrial wooden pallet. Well they sit the casks on the pallet like that and then they pile the pallets up on top of the casks 10, 12, 15 high. Can you imagine the weight now that's on the bottom casks? Compressing these casks, flattening and squashing these casks over the years. It's enormous. It's tons. It's tens of tons of weight. It's not good for the casks. Not only that, but see the side here. You see the little... Um, poplar bung that is used for filling 
the, the casks when they're lying flat. Well, that's got to be sealed up. And if it's sealed with a standard bung pot from Poplar, it acts as a wick and the contents start le le leaking out through that little traditional bunghole. And not only that, they then have to put a bunghole in the top because they're filling the casks in the top because they're storing it on its end. And in doing so, one barrel head has got 100% exposure to the spirit inside for 100% of the time. And the other ca cask head, barrel head, None. Zero. Therefore, the liquor inside cannot extract anything out of the bung into the flat piece of barrel head that's at the top. Therefore, in this instance, you're significantly reducing the availability of wood exposure at the ends for maturing the spirit. Now you could say, hey Ralphie, when it's on its side, it's missing all the exposure to the cat, to the to the staves at the top. So what's the difference? Well, the difference is that when Cooper is, when Coopers are refurbishing a cask, they will replace the heads with fresh wood, which will give vital fresh wood connectivity with the contents for active and proactive maturation. When that barrel head is not even touching the cask, it ain't going to happen. It's not going to happen at all. And another situation which doesn't get talked about is when casks are palleted up and up and up and up to make maximum use of the available warehouse space, Things start to get a little bit heavy at the top and you get an optical illusion which experienced forklift truck drivers need to be aware of. And that is you get an optical illusion that your palletage is going straight where it looks straight but in fact as the pallets go up and up and up they start to lean out. And it's not the first time that a whole stack of palletized whiskey casks have threatened to topple over. Now the damage to the casks, the damage to other casks in the warehouse, the, the risk to employees operating equipment or be working in the vicinity is considerable. Um, and I would conclude by saying quite simply, very simple. When you have a traditional dunnage warehouse which costs more to keep, to manage, to look after, to build, it's more capital intensive. You simply get better results, you get more traditional results. When you have industrial, cheaper to build, more economical, industrial warehouses which are that much taller and you're stacking up the casks, sure you can get more casks in. But it's a false economy because when these palletized casks get stacked and stacked and stacked, there's inevitably these casks at the bottom of the stack, at the back of the stack, which cannot be reached, cannot be touched, cannot be accessed until you literally move everything else. Um, and, and there you have it. I'm mentioning this as an extras because I just want you to be aware of it. I want you to be aware that increasingly the bigger whiskey producers are using more and more palletage as time goes on. And when they move casks from one warehouse to another, as is their habit, once you've palleted, palletized a cask, it's difficult to unpalletize it. For the simple reason, you're changing the dynamics of the storage of the cask and a cask which has been compressed up an end going flat and being decompressed as, as a result of it it starts to it, it can cause leaks very very quickly so palletizing a cask is a one-way ticket if I had a distillery it would not happen 
I would, I would not let it happen. In my opinion, it produces inferior results. It's as simple as that. Because, and I conclude with this, when you, if, if they're not using a poplar bung in the side of a palletized cask into the stave, they replace it with a plastic bung, which means that during the entire duration of the maturation of whiskey and liquor in that cask, it is being partially expo exposed to plastic. Not a lot, very little. But there's plastic going in, isn't there? Because alcohol's a solvent. And that's not a good thing, in my opinion. It's not good. And it is an opinion. Thank you for watching. I, I, I restrained this from becoming a rant. I didn't want it to be a rant. And it isn't a rant. It's a disclosure. Because you very rarely get these things disclosed. disclosed. But with the price of whiskey and other quality spirits, it's understandable. It's reasonable. It's to be expected. And it's to be encouraged, mock mates that we understand how this product is being made and why we are pay paying the prices that we are paying. Is the quality there for the price that's being asked? Well, it better be. It better be. Because it's never been easier now to jump ship from less inspiring distilleries and brands to more inspiring distilleries and brands. It's a big trend. It's happening big time for very good reason. So there you have it. See you soon.